an exciting day for me. When I woke up this morning, this is something I've been waiting on for literally years. Thank you all for coming today. It's very exciting because we're here to celebrate a huge, huge milestone for SHRA, the city and the county, and all of our partners in this great, great project. For more than a decade, we've worked on developing a plan to replace the Twin Rivers community. It is the oldest property in our portfolio and was built in the early 1940s. The systems and infrastructure had reached the end of their useful life and the units no longer met the needs of the families who lived here. Most significantly, the light rail passed right by the community with no stop where residents could board and ride downtown or other places that they needed. It was long past time for us to do something better for our residents who lived here. We knew it would be a heavy lift, bigger than anything that we've ever done, but our residents deserved it and the surrounding community needed it too. We worked hard to win two major federal funding awards that gave us the seed money to begin making our vision for Twin Rivers a reality. A $300,000 Choice Neighborhoods Planning Grant from HUD in 2012 supported the process for creating a blueprint for a new community. That was followed by an extremely competitive $30 million Choice Neighborhoods Initiative Implementation Grant to do the work that we envisioned for this community. Today, with the help of many partners, stakeholders, residents, we're standing at the doorstep of the first block of affordable housing that will soon come out of the ground here at Mirasol Village. This housing is a part of a complete community that will offer more for residents than just four walls and a roof overhead. The Mirasol Village project will create almost 500 units of housing in a mix of market rate, workforce, and public housing units. The housing is designed to promote inclusion with the units interspersed, the affordable, ones, affordable units throughout the project. Amenities will include a secure bicycle parking, landscape courtyards, play area, resident community rooms, a fitness room, a business center, a swimming pool, and a barbecue area. Affordable housing is the key to opening doors for opportunity, and Mirasol Village will be the impetus for changing lives and to make life better for everyone who lives here. So we wouldn't be here today without the leadership and support of our governing boards, the City Council, the Board of Supervisors. It's on their behalf that we administer affordable housing. We're very fortunate to have the mayor here who is just a champion for affordable housing. I'm very fortunate to be able to have someone who's always in, the, in my corner, always rallying for affordable housing and to help those people who are least fortunate. So today I'd like to ask Mayor Steinberg to come and say a few words. I want to begin by thanking you and SHRA for having a vision, not being afraid to take a risk, and always keeping your eye on the prize. Always keeping an eye on what's possible. You know, Tyrone said to me a moment ago, and I'm gonna steal the line if you don't mind. He said, this is not just a housing project. This is building a neighborhood. And it's exactly the way we ought to go about it as we seek to empower all of our neighborhoods in Sacramento to have quality housing, to have real economic opportunities, and to have the services and amenities that every neighborhood should have. And I love this because this project is born of struggle. And because it's born of some struggle, there were many times along the way where SHRA, the city and county could have said, nah, let's not do this. Too hard, too complicated. Federal governments change up and down. State governments change. Certainly city councils and boards of supervisors change. But when you've got a great vision and you have the skill and the willingness to see it through, we arrive at a day like today. And I can't wait for the next celebration when we're actually giving tours of the quality housing 
the affordable housing, the incredible community that's going to be built in and around Marisol Village. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you. One of our most dedicated supporters for the work we do was not able to be here today, and that's Congresswoman Doris Matsui. She's been a tireless champion, working very hard to bring much needed federal funds to our community and allowing us to apply them where they have the greatest impact. Without her assistance and without her, her work, we would not have been able to get that $30 million uh, grant that really helped get this project going. Since she couldn't be here today, she's sending a special message that we'll include in the video from the event today. So I wanna take this opportunity to say thank you, Congresswoman Matsui, for all that you've done and continue to do for Sacramento. Hi everyone, this is Congresswoman Doris Matsui. Over the last few months, we have urged Sacramentans to stay in their homes as much as possible. We know that affordable, accessible homes are imperative to a healthy community. Homes are not a luxury that we can take for granted. And I'm so proud of SHRA, the city, the River District, and all of their partners for leading this transformative project for the returning and new residents of Mirasol Village. In 2012 and 2015, SHRA and the River District received the Choice Neighborhood Grants that would fuel the much needed transformation of this Twin Rivers neighborhood. We had a real opportunity to reimagine what a well-connected, healthy, safe neighborhood should look like for Twin Rivers established residents. Now we will see that vision bloom into the Mirasol Village. Residents will have housing that puts their mental, physical, and financial well-being first. There is no doubt that this is a truly transformative project that will improve the city's and residents' well-being providing countless individuals with the opportunity to create a better future for themselves and their children. Families will have a safe place to live that provides supportive services for those in need, educational opportunities for our youth, from kindergarten through college, and quality affordable housing that families will feel proud to call home. I am honored that over $30 million in federal funding has fueled the transformation of this neighborhood. However, we know that none of this could be done without strong partnerships. Every level of government in partnership with dedicated community members has come together to ensure that Mirasol Village becomes a reality. It truly does take a village. I do look forward to when we are able to welcome families in to Mirasol Village. In the meantime, stay strong and stay safe. So the process and decision to develop Twin Rivers community wasn't done in a vacuum. We needed to engage an army of stakeholders from the public, the nonprofit, the private sector, along with businesses, community members, and most importantly, the residents. Their input was critical because the project would impact their lives and livelihoods. So whatever we decided, we knew we all had to work together. One of the biggest stakeholders is the River District because of its role as an economic generator for the area. One of the people who played a significant role in this effort from the very beginning was Vice, is Vice Mayor Jeff Harris, who serves the River District and the Twin Rivers community. We're glad he's here today, and I'd like to ask him to come up and say a few words. Yeah, I would also like to thank SHRA and the developer McCormick Baron Salazar uh, for taking on this project and I want to thank HUD as well for keeping patience. This is a difficult project to affect. There were a lot of conditions here that we tried to save, like there were many large trees on this site in the old project, but because of grade issues we, we had to remove them. But in building back we're going to come back with something even better and as Tyrone has said tirelessly, we're creating a community. This isn't a housing development, it's not a project. It's a true community and for the River District, that can't, that can't be overstated. You know, we, this district, the River District, is really important to the city of Sacramento because of its proximity to city center and we're near a section of the river that is just absolutely stunning. It's a great location, but this area has languished. It's long been a commercial industrial area. And of course, homelessness is a big issue here. 
But SHRA took this project on and has just been dogged in getting the TCC grant, the Choice Neighborhoods Initiative grant. My hat is really off to everybody at SHRA. Thanks so much for your tireless work to make this project happen. One thing that people, well, there are a few things that people have misconceptions about, but one is this is going to be an integrated income community. That, I, that's huge. If we're going to deconstruct systemic racism, one of the best tools we have is to integrate income, to have people living in proximity to each other with, with differing incomes and make that work. And, and this community is going to be a real showpiece, I think, for that. You know, it's going to be an awful lot different than the project that was here, Dos Rios, then Twin Rivers. This is really going to be something special for the entire city. And it, there are going to be a lot of affordable units, up to 104, as well as replacement of the project units and on up to market rate. So I think that that's going to be tremendous. Like I said, we had to remove a lot of trees, come back with at least 500 new trees. There's going to be a solar component to it. This is truly going to be a sustainable and health-promoting community for all the people who are going to live here. And happily, an awful lot of the people who lived at Dos Rios are very interested still in moving back to their old home here in the River District, and we welcome them. Uh, you know, again, people don't understand how difficult it is to build a project right now during a pandemic. For instance, there was a cement shortage on the West Coast. We're just pulling through that, but things like that make a big difference to the developer and to the builders here. Uh, we're moving through those issues, dealing with virtual inspections instead of on-site inspections. These things are meaningful to me because I'm a general contractor, but they, these are struggles to move through. So everybody working on this project has given it their all. and. Uh, you know, I look forward to the success of this project. I know it's going to uplift the River District. It's going to be a great amenity for the city of Sacramento. I really want to mention a very important and significant funding award uh, that Vice Mayor uh, Harris was just mentioning. And that was we worked in partnership with our master developer, McCormick Baron Salazar, and we were selected to receive a $23 million Transformative Climate Communities Grant. This was funded by the state of California's cap and trade program. And this is the funding that was critical for us to get that light rail stop. The funds support our SIMPLE project. SIMPLE stands for Sacramento Integrated Multimodal Place-Based Living Project and it incorporates all kinds of projects that really assist us with the affordable housing units, the community garden and urban forest, and over 1,000 new trees, solar installation, youth training for, uh, job training for youth, and as I mentioned, the RT stop. I really wanna thank the lead entities that will be working together with SHRA to bring all those projects to fruition, and this is about that whole neighborhood, that whole community, not just the housing. So those, pro those project um, partners are McCormick, Baron Salazar, Salazar, Sacramento Regional Transit, Grid Alternatives, and the Sacramento Tree Foundations. They will help make sure that Mirasol Village is a community that exemplifies a healthy and sustainable future for opportunity, inclusion, and integration. So now I'd like to um, bring Supervisor Phil Cerna this is his district. It includes Mirasol Village. I'm very appreciative of his support for the housing that provides opportunities uh, for the residents here. And I think that this project really uh, exemplifies the partnership between the city and the county. So he's always been a champion uh, for residents and those people who need it the most. And so if we could have Supervisor Phil Cerner come up and say a few words. I am indeed very uh, proud and uh, honored to be here with uh, my friends and colleagues that serve on the City Council with the Mayor uh, of the City of Sacramento to uh, really um, celebrate today. And, and I want to be clear, today is not just uh, a celebration and a newsworthy uh, press event to um, document the progress on a housing project. This really is transformation. This is transformation at its best here in our region, quite frankly. And as someone that first uh, lived in public housing here in Sacramento back in the uh, uh, late 60s, early 70s, uh, my family uh, lived in what was then called New Helvetia, which was a similar 
uh, SHRA public housing project on Broadway for a couple of years, for the first two years of my life. And I can tell you that it wasn't just housing then, and this is not just gonna be housing today. The foundations you see in back of me, the turned earthwork, that represents um, opportunity for folks. And it gives people the opportunity to not just have shelter, which obviously they need, but it gives them opportunity for a future. It gives them some respite in order to take care of their families, in order to uh, finish their degrees. In this case, it's gonna give them a rightful opportunity to actually enjoy the light rail uh, service that ha for years has passed them by because we'll have a, a light rail stop uh, here as part of the project. So I too, on behalf of the Board of Supervisors, uh, wanna uh, thank SHRA, I wanna thank our uh, private developer uh, partners. Uh, Lachelle mentioned the fact that there's an intersection here with our efforts at the state to reduce greenhouse gas emissions through the cap and trade program. I'm uh, honored to serve on the California Air Resources Board as well. So this really is a day for me to reflect on some of those, uh, those interesting uh, intersections for me personally, um, you know, through the fact that I've actually lived in uh, housing uh, like this. I, I appreciate it from a very personal perspective. Um, we're not just, again, building housing. We're really looking at the future of our community, and this is one of the best examples I can think of. So again, thank you to, to everyone for uh, being here today. So redevelopment in the River District has a significant impact on downtown. This is truly the gateway into our downtown corridor. And those two sectors create a synergy that greatly enhances economic development opportunities in that combined area. The Mirasol Village Redevelopment Project will be complemented by complete streets project along 12th Street into downtown. It will create a safer corridor for bicycles to share the road with vehicles and a more attractive gateway from the River District into the downtown. The thing that struck me when I first came to really tour this community and stepped into this role was the fact that people lived here, but they couldn't even get to the Boys and Girls Club down the street because it just wasn't a safe place. So now with this project, this is a part of integrating and making it a complete neighborhood and a safe place to travel. It's a win-win for the downtown, which is represented by council member Steve Hansen. I'd like to invite him to come up and say a few words. Good morning, everybody. I think uh, not only does SHRA deserve a deep amount of gratitude, uh, their whole team, but it's really important for everybody to realize that we are at one moment in the arc of a tremendous story. I live less than a mile away, right over that railroad levy on F Street, and I've lived there for uh, over 13 years now. What you don't realize is that this community was built here in the 40s because it was away from everybody else. That's how we used to do public housing. That's how we used to do affordable housing. It was meant to be an island set adrift with no other connections. That is a wrong way to build a neighborhood and to build a community. As you've heard, this is going to be not just a housing project, but a neighborhood and Lachelle and the other speakers have touched on it. But um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention not just the light rail stop as the RT uh, board chair right now, and we have RT board members and council member Harris and supervisor Cerna. This project is also contributing to our climate change goals to provide more infill housing, our environmental justice goals and providing uh, green housing, affordable housing. It's also contributing to our long-term um, goals around the creative economy because this project is also helping the Powerhouse Science Center, which is just on the riverfront in the old PG&E Powerhouse, uh, soon to be um, a science center supporting our kids and families as we try to advance STEAM education. Lachelle mentioned it, but not only could these kids not get to the Boys and Girls Club, less than a mile away, right by my house, they couldn't get to the closest elementary school, which is Washington Elementary, which is now a STEAM school itself. Fixing these broken connections, repairing this neighborhood, and rebuilding a community that is resilient and strong has to be the work of all of us. And in the end, it is difficult. All the work it took to get to this point was likely to fail. It, we are on the precipice of failure more times than Lazarus was on his deathbed. <laughs> but that we are here today at the top of that peak and with the end in sight that the residents who lived here called this home before will soon be able to come back 
and enjoy a wonderful brand new community with the amenities they deserve and we deserve so they can be fully integrated into the rest of the downtown, the rest of the city, is truly a remarkable commitment to what governing is really all about. And I give a lot of credit not only to Lachelle but to my colleagues because governing is so much more than a tweet or a quick pronouncement if only the task has gone quickly. It requires deep and hard labor to make sure that projects like this that people who are vulnerable depend on us for actually happen. If we didn't actually follow through on this, many people wouldn't have cared, but we would have failed in our duties to our public. And so I'm really proud today to be with all of you to show that our love in action produces results. And in the end, we build a better city because of it. So thank you, Lachelle. Thank you to HUD. Thank you to McCormick Barons. And thank you to my colleagues for not giving up on this project, even when that would have been the easy thing to do. So the Mirasol Village project was made possible, as I mentioned, with the infusion of a $30 million Federal Choice Neighborhoods grant. Those were highly competitive grants, and we we're very glad that HUD saw the value of this project and how critically it was needed to help us provide safe, decent housing for our residents. HUD is providing alternate funding options for housing authorities to really bridge the gap as funding commitments continually change. The thing that has changed with HUD in terms of looking at neighborhoods when they first started this process decades and decades ago is they really only focused on just the housing, just those units that need to be revitalized. They started to really, based on their research, determine that it was more than just the housing, it was the entire neighborhood. And that's why we're so excited that now with the funds that we can focus on not just this particular housing development, but the entire community here. Um, Councilmember Hansen talked about the Powerhouse Science Center. They were one of the key partners that really came forward and talked about the benefit of what these changes would do for them. So our Region 9 Administrator, uh, Christopher Patterson, couldn't be here today to see the progress we're making with the investment of all of those federal funds. However, he will be providing remarks for the video that we're making today. And I just wanted to say thank you, Chris, for all the support that you provide to SHRA. My name is Christopher Patterson, Region 9 HUD Administrator and National Lead for the Foster Youth to Independence Initiative under Secretary Ben Carson's leadership. Today, I'm proud to celebrate the progress being made in building Mirasol Village. Mirasol is a cornerstone project and a broader effort to redevelop the River District and Sacramento's Promise Zone. HUD first began its partnership with Sacramento to make this a vision and a reality back in 2012 when we awarded them a $300,000 Choice Neighborhood Planning Grant. The grant was used to develop the Neighborhood Transformation Plan for the larger River District and Rail Yards neighborhood. It marked the beginning of what would be the greatest creation and comprehensive plan for a blueprint for the neighborhood's revitalization, including in housing its people, which would be essential in laying the groundwork to launch this community transformation effort. In 2015, HUD then went all in. We awarded the SHRA and the City of Sacramento a $30 million Choice Neighborhood Implementation Grant to make this vision a reality, and boy, have we come a long way. Did you know the word Mirasol is Spanish for the word sunflower? And when literally translated, it means look into the sun. I can't think of a better name for this development. When completed, Mirasol Village and its residents alike and the namesake of a bright and beautiful jewel standing tall and proud under the sun. I applaud Sacramento Housing Redevelopment Agency and the City of Sacramento and the County of Sacramento and the businesses, community, Twin Rivers residents themselves for their long-standing leadership in bringing this transformation closer to fruition. Thank you and I congratulate you all for the hard work. This project is also coming together through our partnership with McCormick Baron Salazar, who is the master developer. We selected them because of their extensive expertise in doing this. This is not their first rodeo. As the owner and manager of affordable housing uh, with more than 40 years of experience, they've developed over 23,000 homes in 23 states in the U.S. So we couldn't have asked for a stronger partner. They have extensive experience in pulling together the complicated financing that it takes to make this project go. 
So CEO Vince Bennett wasn't able to be here today. We do have Dan Falcone who is here, who's been working on the project. So we thank you so much for all that work. On behalf of the entire McCormick Baron Salazar team and our development director, Dan Falcone, I am pleased today to introduce you to Marisol Village. Once completed, the 489 apartments will welcome individuals and families from all walks of life and incomes. In developing Marisol Village with our partners, Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency, our development process was with families and children in mind which is why we focus on large units that would provide plenty of room for everyone in the home. We wanted to create beautiful and inviting homes for families where they could thrive and grow. In addition to family-friendly amenities such as the community room, barbecue, picnics, swimming pool areas, uh, we'll give families and friends the opportunity to gather outside and enjoy the weather. The computer lab will give an extension to the vast World Wide Web with unlimited Wi-Fi. The play structures and bicycle parking give kids the chance to grow, to run, to play uh, in, in every day of their life. In close working relationship with SHRRA, we built Marisol Village with the environment in mind. We have the strategically designed landscaping and gardens to attract butterflies and bees to help pollinate the plants and keep the beauty growing. EV car share, EV charging stations provide transportation opportunities for residents who are currently without a vehicle but still have private transportation needs. The EV car share provides residents with convenient and easy access to go to the doctor's appointments as well as transportation to grocery stores. A new light rail station will also be part of the new development. For working families, the Early Childhood Education Center provides a safe learning place for young children so they can get an early start on education. The property will also have a resident services office, which will include employment and skills training, health and wellness programs, financial education, early childhood services, after school and summer programming, and community safety programs. We thank our finance par partners, U.S. Bank, for their equity in the amount of $24.7 million and construction financing in the amount of $44 million. We also thank our development partners who help us make a home for those who are underserved so they can have a beautiful place to live and thrive. Many thanks to the City of Sacramento, the Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency, SVA Architects, Mid-State Mid -State Construction Company, the John Stewart Company, Urban Strategies, HUD, the California Tax Credit Allocation Committee, the California Debt Limit Allocation Committee, the California Debt Department of Housing and Urban Development, the California Strategic Growth Council, the Housing Authority of the City of Sacramento, and the City of Sacramento Tax Credit Investor, the U.S. Bank Corp. Uh, Community Development, Corporation Construction Lender, the U.S. Bank Permanent Lender, Freddie Mac via Arcadia Commercial Mortgage. Thank you. So before we end the program, there is one more accomplished I'd like to highlight because it represents the overarching commitment that we've made to our residents in our underserved communities, and that is the Sacramento Promise Zone. We earned this very competitive grant in 2015, and it created a partnership of federal, state, and local agencies to give local leaders proven tools to improve the quality of life for some of Sacramento's most vulnerable areas. So by building the capacity of all of those partner organizations and having a cross-sector collaboration, we're really able to improve educational outcomes, foster sustainable economic base, accelerate job creation, and promote healthy behaviors. So Tyrone Roderick Williams, who's our, our director of of uh, Development Finance is also the director of the fi uh, Parma Zone, and he really has done an outstanding job, and I really just want to acknowledge the work uh, that he's done. So we started two years ago, first relocating 218 families into housing of their choice. Then we focus on all of the underground infrastructure. We had to elevate the site. We had to bring it. We're going to bring in more trees. Today, you're seeing the streets and the the streets and the curves being installed, and the first stages of preparation to lay foundations 
for the housing to go vertical. And that could not have been done. I know a lot of people have been thanking me, but really it is my staff. They work so hard. They've never given up on this project, even though I guess we have been on our deathbed uh, more times than I can recall. Um, but they really have just persevered, and that really is the strength of SHRA. So I'd like to thank Victoria Johnson for leading the development team, Joanna Davis, who really helped worked hard to secure those grants, uh, the $23 million grant, uh, TCC grant, our developed finance team members, and Nichols, Susan Vesey, and Christine Weikert, and our construction team members, Dan Maloney, Mike Taylor, and Eric Anderson. You guys just do a fantastic job day in and day out. I drive by this every single day. My daughter always talks about how I talk to different inanimate objects like buildings. <laughs> And so I always drive by and say, we're working on you. And I know we're working on this project because of all of the people at SHRA who continue to make sure it happens. They've been so instrumental in helping us reach this milestone. So this time next year, we expect to welcome the first residents back to this community. And we look forward to celebrating that exciting milestone. So there's only one day that's better than the groundbreaking and that is the ribbon cutting. And that is the day that I will be so excited to stand before you and to really talk about now people can call this place home. So now, let's turn some dirt. <laughs>